Hey everyone, so the 2.0 version of PCSX2 is finally released. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to completely set this up so that you can play all your favorite games on PC. First thing you need to do is head over to the website, PCSX2.net. We're going to get the latest stable version. This is 2.0 right here. We'll go with the installer for this one. Go ahead and download it right here to my desktop. Now here we still have the option to install this portable if you want, but we're going to go with standard. We'll click next. And we're going to go ahead and launch this. Here's the welcome screen. You can change your language of themes here. Go ahead and pick uh, this one right here. This is asking you for the BIOS file. Now, as you guys know, on YouTube, we really can't share this. It's against the TOS. But quick Google search is going to get you to find the right file you need. And ultimately, the best way to get this is to dump it from your own system. I have my file here on the desktop. And the directory here is pointing to a PCSX2 folder in our documents. Here's the folder. We'll open the BIOS folder here. Drag it in here. Close, close. Refresh the list and here it is. Click next. This is asking us for our games. Now I have a few games here on my desktop. Really what you wanna do is point this to where you have your games. We'll add. It's asking if we wanna recursively scan. This means anytime you add games or take away games, when you launch the emulator, it's gonna update the list for us. Here we have controllers. Now I have a PS4 controller plugged into this. So what I'm going to do is head over to automatic mapping. Find my controller right here. And it's already mapped, ready to go. Next, finish. At this point, you can pretty much just click on any game and play it. This is ready to go. I'll give you an example of that just by clicking this game here. Game launches and plays. Now the thing with PCSX2 is that we have so many more options of so many things we can do. First thing I like to do is change this to the grid view and we could actually make this so that it shows us the game covers. Go to tools, we could go to cover downloader. It's a GitHub page with the PS2 covers. Scroll down right here to the PCSX2 setup and you have two choices. You could do regular flat covers or you could do 3D covers. I like the flat covers, so I'm gonna click this here to copy this whole line right here. We're gonna paste this in. It's done. Now, one thing I advise you do, I'm gonna link this in the description. Keep this page on hand because anytime you add games, this is not gonna update it automatically. So you'll need to do the process again. Another thing I like to do is go into the settings. Here in the interface uh, section, you can save state on shutdown. Pause controller on disconnect, pretty self-explanatory. Pause on focus loss, so you can pause the emulator when your alt tab, for instance, or if another window opens up. And the last thing here on the behavior section is if you want to let the boys know what you're playing, you click on enable discord presence. Some of the options we have here is that you can start the game on full screen. And another one I like to do here is render to a separate window, so it'll show you the gameplay separately from the games list. This is very optional. These are all things you could choose to do or not. Here we have the language and theme again. Say you're not happy with the theme, you can check out a bunch of different ones here. I'll go back to this one. And here, under automatic updater, you actually have the choice still to choose whether you want to stand on a stable build or a nightly build to check out some of the newer features in the emulator updates. So this is totally up to you. This is good because you're not just stuck to the stable version. In our games list, you can add more games here, different folders. For instance, if you have an NA collection and Japan collection, you can throw them all in here separately. You can keep them separate in your files, but join them all together in the emulator. More BIOS, if you wanna use a specific BIOS for a specific game, you can add them to your BIOS folder and then pick the BIOS from here. The emulation, uh, most of these settings you really don't want to mess with. Uh, one thing I do turn on is enable cheats. And if you're on a 60 hertz panel, 
enable vsync. All right, now that we're at the graphics menu, first thing I like to do is pick the renderer. I'm gonna go with Vulcan here, since it's fast for my AMD card. We're gonna pick the adapter. This is important if you have hybrid graphics. So for instance, you have your iGPU and your dedicated GPU. Mostly for those people on laptops as well. Pick the card that you want to run the game. I have my graphics card here ready to run this. Down here, there's a few things I personally like to turn on. So for the most part, I leave all of these things alone and then I change them on an individual game basis. So bilinear filtering, I turn it to sharp. Another thing I like to do is apply no interlacing patches. And then we'll head over to rendering. In rendering, I'll turn anisotropic filtering to eight or 16 X. And then I like to turn dithering off because for most times I will upscale the game. The games I don't upscale, I will turn this back on. And I'll use uh, scaled. For the most part, I'll keep it off. For texture replacements. Now, if you wanna dump your textures, this is the directory. Once again, it's gonna show up in your documents folder. When you click dump, it'll create the folder using the game's serial number. And from that serial number, you'll see a folder called dump. I'll give you an example of that right now. We'll run the bouncer. And you can see texture dumping is enabled. This will automatically dump textures to the disk. We'll go to our folder. And here under textures, you can see the game's code and it says dumps and replacements. This is actually where you can add your replacements if you have them. To dump the textures is very simple. However, you do need to go through most parts of the games so that it can collect the texture data and dump it into this folder. As you can see, the game is paused right now because we have that feature where it's not a focus, it will pause. These are the assets. And that's just a quick example of how this works. Now, if you want to do texture replacements within this folder, I'll bring up a texture pack here. This is for God of War 2. I'll drag this in. As you can see, it's a replacement folder. And these are already upscaled images for the game. I'll show you in a moment. So I'll turn this off. And I'll turn this on. We're going to load textures for God of War 2. Asynchronous loading. The description below loads replacement textures on a worker thread, reducing micro stutters when replacements are enabled. One thing we could do is pre cache textures, which says here it preloads all replacement textures to memory. This is a bit resource intensive, so make sure you have enough RAM in your system. Under post processing, one thing I like to personally do, I'll turn the shade boost on and I boost this up to 60 because most games seem to be a bit washed out. This actually brightens them up a bit. Don't want to go too overboard in this because it actually shifts the hue. So you'll get a lot more uh, greener colors where they shouldn't be. Here you can apply sharpening. I, I typically leave this off. And FXAA, I turn this on automatically. On screen display, I like to show the FPS, speed percentage, and GPU usage. This is good to determine whether your settings or your hardware are a limiting factor in playing certain games at full speed. And as for recording, you could record through here. Though I advise you to do it through OBS because you can actually fine tune more of the settings there. You can actually use your GPU for coding. I believe this uses the CPU uh, through FFmpeg. And so that will actually reduce performance in your games. The audio tab. I definitely drop this down because most games seem to be extremely loud on launch. For the memory cards. Here you have two memory cards. As you can see, they are not formatted. Uh, if you wanted to create a new memory card, come down to create. You have a few different sizes here. I recommend sticking with eight megabits. And what we can do here, I'm going to create a new one. Memory card is created. If you wanted to load your memory card onto slot one, you hit eject here. I like this one, right click it and use for slot one. One thing we can do here to format the memory card is use the emulator. Go now to system and start BIOS. And since this is the first launch of the BIOS, it's actually going to do the quick welcoming. I'm just going to speed through this.
we'll go into our browser and here we have our memory cards and as you notice right here they're not formatted so if we click on the memory card we're able to format it here There we go. Now we have two formatted memory cards. There are instances where a lot of games will ask you, hey, your memory card is not formatted. Do you want to format it? And, but I've noticed a lot of games don't do that. And you'll end up stuck in certain scenarios where your memory card is just not active in the game. You could use save states and then come back at a later time. However, doing it this way, we just skip that headache. All right, moving on to the network. This I'll cover in a completely different video. We're going to make a video going over setting up internet to play with your friends a hard disk drive um, to my knowledge there are about 32 or 35 north american ps2 games that will uh, take advantage of this if you do want to play something like final fantasy 11 for instance enable this it's going to be a 40 gigabyte minimum create image make sure you do have the actual space on your system because this is actually going to take up 40 gigabytes we'll disable this for now folders is going to let us know exactly where all these particular things are saved. So your cache, your cheats, your covers, your snaps, and your save states. And as for achievements, achievements are tracked through retro achievements. So if you want to set up tracking of your achievements in game, go to retroachievements.org, create an account, and then to log in, click the login button, username, password. And once you're ready, it will enable achievements. Initially, it's going to let you know if you want to use hardcore mode and what hardcore mode does is that it will eliminate using uh, save states, cheats and slow down functions just to keep it fair in earning your achievements. All right. And that's for the most part, our initial setup we will go into the game. We'll go God of War. I'll maximize this. And I'm going to click on settings and we're going to go to game properties. Okay. From game properties, what I like to do, I'll go to patches here. It's going to patch in 16, nine for us. Though the game does have an option in game for widescreen. This makes the actual screen wide. We'll go into our graphics here. I'll go to rendering. Now I'm going to go to my monitor's resolution, which is 1440p. And we it, it seems like our textures are already loaded. So, for example, I will unload the textures and you see that the logo went a little blurry and some of the assets here on Kratos' face went a little blurry as well. I'm going to load them back in. And you can see clearly on his lips right here where some sharpening happened. I'll turn it off one more time. Makes a world of a difference, especially with uh, the people who take their time to do the UI elements. If you want to make the game consistently uh, 16 by nine, you can stretch the FMV if you like. I personally don't. I keep it on auto standard. As for aspect ratio here of the game, since we're stretching the 16 by nine, I'll go widescreen here as well. And we'll just close this out. Go into the game options, enable widescreen, and we have the option here for progressive scan, which I recommend. And we'll jump in the game. You will suffer for this. Don't let him open the door.
gods, he's killed them all. He still has some of the powers of a god. Okay, so here is God of War 16 by 9 HD assets. Now, one thing you see on the screen is actually a funky little green line on the bottom. And we can actually get rid of this right now. Uh, certain games will have some issues like this. What we can do is go into settings, game properties. We'll go to the graphics menu and we actually have a crop section down here. We could go to the bottom section and give it one. Yep. One pixel. And that green line is gone. So there we go back to our full screen. And we have ECSX2 playing God of War 2 with texture upscales at 16 by 9 running 1440p at full speed 60 frames per second. Okay, now as a bonus, one thing I do want to show you here, we did a 3D game, and now we have a 2D game. With 2D fighting games like this, for instance, what I like to do is go into the game properties, and we're going to do something completely different here. In the graphics, we're not going to do any upscaling. One thing I do personally here is go to texture filtering, and I click on nearest. This is going to make all these uh, pixels really sharp. Another thing here that may interfere with this as well. Under post processing, I'm gonna make sure FXAA is turned off. And make sure anisotropic filtering is off as well. Dithering, scaled. Now with those minor tweaks, we're gonna get nice sharp pixels here. For this, what we can also do, we'll go into graphics and then back into post processing. And we can add the lot CRT. This is going to make this look really good. Now we have the scan lines with the 2D games. They just look so right. So there you go. If you found this useful, don't forget to give it a like, share this with a friend, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.